What's up everyone, it's Adon with Adon Tech. Welcome to part one of my new eight part review series where I'm diving deep into every component of my ultimate gaming PC build. If you followed my PC part shopping series up here, you know I did my research and I bought the best longest lasting parts for my build. And today we're starting with the heart of it all, the part I'm most excited about, the motherboard. I went with the ASUS ROG Strix Z890E gaming Wi-Fi board. And in this video, we're gonna get down to if it lives up to my extremely demanding requirements. In my PC part shopping series, I broke down my thought process. I needed a motherboard for Intel's new socket 1851 platform, something that could handle high-end gaming, be extremely robust, reliable, and last at least 10 years. And this board caught my eye for a couple of reasons. First, it's part of ASUS's ROG lineup, known for quality and performance. Second, it supports DDR5 RAM and PCIe 5.0 for both the GPU and the SSDs, and has built-in Wi-Fi 7 and 5 gig Ethernet for fast, reliable connectivity and an amazing robust set of power phases, which I love. And finally, it was time to upgrade. And in all my builds in the past, I've used ASUS boards, so why change now? Installation was a breeze. The IO Shield comes pre-installed, which saves time and it feels premium, and the layout made cable management super easy. But let's get into the details. How does it actually perform? I paired this board with an Intel Core Ultra 7 265K, Intel's latest for the socket 1851, and 96 gigs of DDR5 RAM running at 6400 megahertz. First thing I noticed, the power delivery. This board has an 18 plus two plus one plus two power stages design, which means it can handle extreme power draw. It can do overclocking and maintain constant stability even when at max performance. And while I personally do not overclock anymore, I knew the system could handle it if I wanted to try it. There's an ASUS exclusive BIOS feature that precisely analyzes individual memory modules to optimize performance and can pinpoint potential issues. A huge win in making sure that you have a fully reliable, stable system for years to come. The cooling is extremely robust on this board. You got fan headers and heat sinks galore, and on average, my temps were 33 degrees Celsius on the on idle for my CPU and about 45 degrees Celsius while gaming. And speaking of gaming, the PCIe 5.0 slot is a big win. I'm running an NVIDIA RTX 3080, and the bandwidth ensures I'm getting every ounce of performance and not a single stutter. It's also got seven M.2 NVMe slots for long-term expandability, three of which are PCIe 5.0 compatible, all cooled incredibly well. On top of that, it has enough USB ports in varying configurations to make sure you never run out of ports again. It has a Q code display, which is extremely important for diagnosing issues in the event your system doesn't boot. Furthermore, it's got a clear CMOS button in the back in the event of a BIOS crash or other system failure due to a faulty update. So it can really save you in the event of a problem. You really want those features on your boards. The only thing I did not like about this board is the choice of audio processing. It uses an audio connect that connects via a USB interface rather than the traditional high definition audio interface codecs that I was used to. I could tell the difference when I started using the board, but not anymore. I got used to it and I was able to adjust my sound settings, but that was probably the only thing I saw about the board that I was like, whoa. I don't really like that. Let's go into this new section I like to call honorable mentions and cool features where I talk about some things that are cool about the board, but I didn't personally use. So this board supports AI overclocking in the BIOS, which is perfect for enthusiasts, but I don't do any overclocking, so I won't know how good that works, but you'd be able to push your CPU outside of bounds you ever thought possible. It also does have Wi-Fi 7, which can hit 2.4 gigabit, gigabit per second speeds for streamers needing ultra fast uh, reliability and connectivity, but I'm all wired, so I wouldn't know that. And you've also got those additional 5.0 PCI Express slots for great expandability. So I'm only using one at this time, but I know that if I wanna add higher speeds and more capacity, I can do it without sacrificing any bandwidth. So now at this point, you may be wondering, who's this motherboard for? Is it for me? Well, this board, in my opinion, is perfect for virtually any and all builders. While new builders may not be able to take advantage of the copious amounts of features, if built correctly and protected electrically, it will last you at least eight to 10 years. And as I always say, the most expensive item isn't always the best, but the cheapest is usually always the worst. And so while ASUS is not shy of their price tag of $449 that I bought this for, it's purchased with the assurance that this board is going to last as long as I want it to last. And while you can save some money on buying a lower quality board, even without all the bells and whistles, a term I don't like for many reasons, it's really the quality and lifespan you're buying with this exact board from ASUS. I'm using this board as a gaming enthusiast, technology connoisseur, content creator, and video editor. I wanted a board that will not flinch at anything I throw at it for the entire life of the board. But if you're on a budget or a first time builder, you might be better off with something like the ASUS Z890P, which still supports the same socket 1851, DDR5, but costs less. It won't have the same amount of power phases and USB ports, so I'd recommend pairing that with something like the Core 5 Ultra. So there you have it guys, that's my review of the ASUS ROG Strix Z890E gaming Wi-Fi motherboard. Next up is part two, where I'll be reviewing my CPU. 
Don't miss it. If you found this review helpful, feel free to subscribe. I'm happy to answer any questions you may have, so leave them in the comments down below. You can also give this video a like. It tells other people that this was a helpful video to you as well. I'm on a journey to bring you the best PC building content, and I'd love for you to join me. Check out the full PC part shopping series in the playlist link below to see how and why I picked this exact motherboard. This has been the Don with the Don Tech, and remember, the Don's got your back.